Hi, I'm Jean Rydberg from IkeLight, and I'm here to talk to you about one of our favorite systems today, which is the Olympus Tough TG6 camera with housing and DS51 Mark II strobe. So we're gonna do a little unboxing. I've got, to start with, our housing. Oh, this is our strobe. This is our housing. And I have my knife. So the first thing that we get when we open the box is your iGlite sticker, which I hope you're sticking on any of your dive gear. Your instructions which is one page telling you how to care for the housing and all the specifics of it, which I'll go over some of those in this video. You can also download that if you go to the product page on our website, um, just go to Olympus TG6 housing and at the bottom of the page, there will be a link to the instruction manual. So when you download that, you could keep it on your phone or on your computer when you're traveling. And unlike this piece of paper, it won't ever get wet hopefully, and it can go wherever you are. So we've got a little bag, which is a lanyard, a lubricant, and an anti-reflection ring. Um, so the lanyard, this is a breakaway lanyard, which is a safety feature. So if you were to have this housing attached to you and you got caught on something while you're diving, you don't want to be stuck to a wreck or a reef. Um, so the lanyard will actually break away if you apply pressure to it. You never wanna carry your system by the lanyard. Um, it's only for underwater use, really. The lubricant is necessary uh, for lubricating the seal on your housing. The housing seal has to be lightly lubricated for it to close properly uh, because it's a piston seal. So make sure that you keep that on hand. <clears throat> These little, uh, capsules of lubricant really can last a long time if you're using them properly. So you'll get plenty of that as you'll see as we open everything. The anti-reflection ring is most useful if you're shooting this behind a dome port. So um, for instance, if you're using the FCON T02 lens, then there can be a lot of reflections bouncing around in the dome port and uh, this can go on that a uh, highly reflective ring on the front of the camera uh, just around here so that it's not as reflective. It's kind of got a matte black finish and so that'll help you out with the reflections. One thing I really like is that we've changed over to this uh, compostable uh, corrugated wrap to package our housings. So this is a little more sustainable than the plastic and foam that we used to use. So I'm just going to take this out here and put the box to the side. And here's my housing. <clears throat> so on the housing, first thing you'll see, the flat port is covered by a vinyl cover. So this is just protective. It can be used whenever you're not using the housing in the water. The housing flat port is glass, so not as prone to scratching or anything like that. The flat port has threads on the front of it, so you can attach a 67 millimeter threaded lens right to the front of the housing, or you could take the whole flat port off and put on one of our optional dome ports, which allow you to either just have a native wider angle of view and shoot those split shots that I really like where you're half in and a half out of the water. Um, or you can shoot the FCON lens, which I really, really like because you get a zoom through range of basically like an eight millimeter circular fisheye all the way up to a 30 millimeter macro. And it's all in one self-contained unit and it's really flexible while you're diving. So, on the housing itself, you've got really ergonomic controls. This is a really large shutter release control. Um, I just operate it with my forefinger, a rubberized control on the top, the zoom knob, and all the back push buttons have the little labels engraved right onto them. So 
when I don't remember exactly where everything is on the camera, I can just look at the housing and it's right there. It's never gonna fade, it's never gonna fall off, it's just there. And I really like the bright red video record button because the TG6 takes great video and it's right there, it's easy to see and easy to operate with your thumb when you're shooting your housing. So to open the housing, I've got a uh, latch on the side. I just push the two buttons. I open it this way and then that allows the housing to kind of pop open. You're going to slide the camera right inside until it meets the front of each of these ribs. So you want the camera to be square inside of the housing um, and then everything will work properly and it'll be ready to go. This is the O-ring that you're going to lubricate really lightly just so that it slides properly on the front of the housing when you close it again. And that's our housing. So my next thing I want to do when I set up my housing is I want to put the tray and handle on it. So my tray and handle is going to help me so that I have something to grip onto when I'm carrying it around the dive site. Um, and it's going to give me an attachment point for my strobe, which is really necessary to bring out the color in my photos. So I've got my tray and handle 2605.04. That's an action tray two. And this comes already assembled inside of the box. And it comes with a few different sets of hardware. So it's got uh, 1224 hardware, which I don't need. That's for older housings. It's got a single quarter 20 mount hardware. That's for other manufacturers of housings where they only have one um, mounting bolt in the center. Ours has two, so we need this bag that has two screws for quarter 20. So I'm gonna put this aside and get my screws out. So this is my tray and handle and it's got Ike Light made in the USA on the front. So I want that facing the front of the housing when I put it on. The handle will be in my left hand when I put it on the housing. That's why we call it a tray with left handle. So I'll turn my housing over and you can just set it kind of on the top of the housing and then line this up. And I've got one screw, one washer on each mount. So let's see. I'll get it started with my thumb and my forefinger. And then I'm gonna come back afterwards and tighten it with the screwdriver. So I'll just get both of them started and that'll make it so I don't have to hold it like this. And then I can take my screwdriver, oh, that's a pocket knife, and I can tighten these until they're snug. I'm just using a really large flat screwdriver to do this. And after I go diving with this, I usually like to remove these again and rinse everything. You don't want all the salt water to get stuck in these holes that the screws go through um, because everything's just going to sit there and eventually even stainless steel can corrode if it's sitting like that. Um, so at the end of my dive, I can just use these same two screws and I can take it back out and I can rinse everything properly and that'll keep everything working smoothly moving forward. So this tray and handle has a quick release button on it. So that's what's going to allow me to attach my strobe arm. So I think next thing I'm going to do is set up my strobe and the arm so I can attach it to my housing. So I'm just going to set this here. And this is the box for my arm, and this is the box for my strobe. So I'll open the strobe first. So this is the DS-51 strobe. It's our smaller strobe. Um, that's really a good match for the TG6. It's really good size balance, um, and it's powered by four AA batteries. So that's 
common, easy to use. Uh, you might already be using AA batteries for something else in your dive kit. It's wrapped in that same corrugated wrap that we have the housing in. Here's our strobe colored to match the housing, which looks nice with the black detail. It comes with a diffuser already attached to the front of it that's removable. It's kind of opposite the way I expect it to work. Um, if I was to squeeze these, it actually tightens it so it's gonna stay on the strobe harder as I squeeze these. Uh, I actually spread them apart to remove them from the strobe. So that's kind of good because most people don't end up removing their diffuser from the strobe or wanting it to be removed. This is the front of the strobe. You can see the flash tube. One thing I really like to do with this diffuser is instead of losing this and buying another one and buying another one, there's these two little holes in the front of it. You can just take a little fishing line and put it through those holes and tie it off and then tie it to like the ball mount and you'll never lose it. Even if it falls off, it'll still be there. You just pop it back on. So I'm gonna put this on. And also in my box is another sticker. I'll put that in the pile. And another tube of the lubricant, which you don't actually need the lubricant on the battery door of the strobe. The lubricant is only for the sync cord connection. So it's not gonna help you when you close this battery door. It might actually attract more dirt and hair to the O-ring. I recommend only putting it on the cord connection. So I'm gonna put this over in my pile of lubricant and things that we'll have there. This cap is for that electrical sync cord connection. So in this system, we actually aren't using that at all. This cap is gonna stay attached to the strobe, or no, we're gonna detach it to put on the fiber optic converter. So we will take this off in a little bit when we get it set up. So I'll put my instructions to the side and I'm gonna get my strobe arm out. So the strobe arm is what attaches the strobe to my tray and handle. And here it is. Put this box over here. So this is a ball arm. So the ball sockets are kind of reticulating in these clamps. I can loosen them so they're moving freely. I can position this wherever I want it and then tighten them so that it's either very snug or just a little bit snug so it'll stay where I put it, but it's still movable. So this open side is going to end up attaching to the ball mount that's on the strobe already when it comes out of the box. So I'm gonna loosen it until it's free of this ball mount. So I, I can put it on and off at will. And this is the area where I always look a little fumbly when I'm doing this. But you have to align these two balls on the bottom of the clamp, then rotate it around. And then just tighten it snug. So that's gonna hold the strobe on. When you're really shooting, you're gonna have these wing nuts pointed towards you so that you can easily turn them while you're diving. So I'm gonna have strobe facing front, the wing nuts facing towards me. I'm gonna do that to this one too. Just loosen it a little bit. All right, now this is the part that's going to go into our quick release handle. So, as I showed you before, I'm gonna press this button with my thumb while I put the stem in, and it's gonna go and just click in. Like that, you see the button, it's in there. So, mine isn't super tight. You'll find that especially when the strobe has batteries in it, it's not going to want to hold it up like this when you're on the surface. So, it's nice to just keep your strobe in kind of a resting position against the table. So then you can work and you're not having it flop all over the place. So what we're missing now is a way for the strobe to communicate with the camera that's going to be inside of the housing. And what I have to be able to do that is called the RC1 TTL receiver. 
This is a really cool product because it uses the RC mode of the camera, which means remote control mode, and it allows the camera to tell the strobe directly how much to fire for each photo. So it's using the information it gathers when it sends its pre-flash signals and it knows that your strobe is there and it can correctly change its output so that you're getting the best lighting for every shot, whether you're shooting a close focus wide angle or whether you're shooting macro, it's varying the strobe's output. So that's in this cute little box. I'm gonna open. What I have inside the box is just the instruction manual for it, which you can also find online. So you can download the RC1 instructions, the DS51 instructions, and the housing instructions all from our website. And then I've got a little bubble wrap bag that has the RC1 in it. Now, this isn't a bubble wrap bag, which isn't the uh, corrugated that I was talking about earlier, but we do reuse these bags because we receive parts in from one of our vendors in these bags and we reuse them when we package some of our products. So we're trying to be more sustainable in that point. So I can take it out and it's just this little thing that attaches to your strobe. It's got uh, our cord style connection on it. So I can unthread it with this retaining ring and pull the cap off. So this has the pins and receptacles that are going to match the corresponding pins and receptacles on the strobe's bulkhead. And that's going to provide an electrical connection. It actually, the strobe powers this through this connection. So there's no batteries in this. You never have to replace the batteries. You never have to worry about it uh, losing signal. As long as your strobe has good batteries and it's still firing, then this will be working. So I'm gonna go back to my strobe and that bulkhead cap we talked about earlier. I'm gonna do the same with that retaining ring, take it off, set it aside. And that's when I'm going to take it and match the pins to the receptacles on this bulkhead. So pin to receptacle, receptacle to pin, I just line it up. It has a really nice like recessed feature. So this is a half moon and it goes into the half moon recess on the strobe and just push it in and then tighten it as far as I can all the way down until it stops super snug. And that's it. And every once in a while, like every, maybe two or three days and definitely at the end of a week of diving, I'm gonna wanna remove that from the strobe and then clean everything and lightly lubricate the outside of that O-ring on the RC1. And that's gonna keep everything working well and prevent it from leaking or anything like that. When you lubricate it, you don't have to take the O-ring off at all. All you do is put a little bit of lubricant on your finger and just run it around the outside of that O-ring and everything's gonna work perfectly for you. So the last piece of our puzzle is the fiber optic cord. And that I'm just going to open up, put my instructions to the side and take it out of the box. And this can't be more simple. I'm going to actually maybe wrap it once around my arm just because I don't like things dangling around. And then I'm gonna plug it into the port on the housing. And I'm going to plug the other end into the port on the RC1 TTL receiver. And that's it. That's my whole system. I'm ready to put my camera in. I'm ready to go diving. All I need to do is put AA batteries in my strobe, do some test shots, do a test in the tank and watch and make sure that no bubbles are coming out or any problems are happening and start to dive. And I'm really confident in this system, especially because what I like is that the TG6 is waterproof on its own. So I can rest assured that even if I really screw this up, I'm probably not going to damage the camera. Everything's gonna be okay. I know I can just get in the water and take some really good pictures. So. I thank you for joining me today. 
If you like this video, please go down and click like, go up and click subscribe, and keep checking out our YouTube page and our website for lots more tips on using the TG6 in the water and also using all kinds of systems. We have all kinds of articles about places we like to dive, how to shoot anything and everything, and really anything you need to know when you're about to go underwater. You can also reach out and contact us if you have any questions at all. We're every day answering emails, answering phone calls, and we're here to help you. We want you to get the best results when you go diving. So that's it. Thanks for today, and I look forward to diving with you next time.